YouTube. It's Eric again with Eric Flight. Um, today's video is about applying for a student pilot license and also medical information for pilots, rebel pilots. So, what you need to know is that the rules changed right around the time where I had to get my student pilot license. Um, I'm going to show you what that looks like when you actually get the little student pilot's license card. A um, little history. In the past, what used to happen was you would get your student pilot license with your first medical. So you would basically fly with your instructor on the pre-solo, which is before you could fly by yourself. He has to sign off on that. But you would go get your medical and then you would also get the student pilot license with the medical. Uh, that changed with um, rules of Congress and the FAA and stuff like that. And now they have an online website where you just um, apply for just the student pilot license. The medical is separate. You can actually fly um, pre-solo, um, anything pre-solo, as long as you're not the pilot in command, um, without a medical. Now, is that recommended? Well, that depends on if you're in good health or not, or if you think you have some things to worry about. Uh, first thing that I want to tell you about is um, you shouldn't be worried about the medical, but you should go get the medical if you're in this for the long haul, um, just to make sure that you meet the requirements. Um, what you need for a private pilot license uh, is a third class medical, which is the uh, the, the easiest medical to get basically. Um, there are some requirements obviously still and then you also have to understand that if you just want to fly for recreation that there's also a um, sport pilot license which does not require a medical but it does require you to be in fit enough health and also have a uh, driver's license. I will not be talking about that but just to let you know that there are options if you have some health conditions that might not let you get a third class medical, but that will let you get a sports uh, pilot license, uh, which obviously has more restrictions on it, but it lets you fly still. So anyways, let me pause this for one second, and I'm gonna get my student pilot license to show you what it looks like. So as I said, I was gonna show you what the uh, student pilot license looks like. I'm gonna um, wipe out some stuff here. It's gonna be uh, faded out in the video, but uh, you basically get a card like this, and it has all your information on there. Um, it does say student pilot. It's actually pretty cool and impressive when you first get it. You're like, oh, this is pretty cool. You gotta sign the back. But um, you get one of these student pilot licenses now by going on the IACRA, I-A-C-R-A website and applying for a student pilot license. Uh, you wanna do that before you start flight lessons because um, if you go for your first flight lesson, by the way, you wanna get there early because your flight instructor will have to enter into the IACRA database all this information in order for you to get approved for a student pilot license. And you have to go into IACRA first and make sure that you get all your information up there. So the next thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna take a look at the IACRA website just to show you where it is and uh, show you where you have to apply. Also remember that when you go for your first flight lesson, um, first real flight lesson. Uh, I did a discovery flight when I uh, first wanted to see what it was like. It's always a good thing maybe to take that discovery flight and the best part of it is they do let you touch the controls. You're not the pilot in command. You never are until you're, you're doing your solo work and you're signed off on that. But uh, you get to use touch the controls, see how it feels to be in a small plane um, and uh, see if you like it first and see if you really want to go through it because once you start the license you really don't want to stop. I mean, you're gonna invest all this money into it and you might as well just see it through. It's, uh, you know, it's just the way to do it. But you also wanna bring some form of identification, um, a passport. I, I eventually used a passport. I showed up to my first lesson and I had a birth certificate card. It was like from the 90s, one of those cards. Cause you have to prove your citizenship before you take lessons and uh, they didn't accept that card, believe it or not. It was um, an old card from the 90s, and uh, they just said it's not a valid form because it didn't have a seal on it. Now, it did have a seal on it, but again, it was an old card. So they said, like, well, you know, we can't really accept that. We don't really accept those things. So if you have an old pa uh, 
no birth certificate card showing that you're an American citizen. Uh, you're gonna have to do better than that. You need an actual copy of the birth certificate. And uh, I was moving into a new house. I had stuff in boxes, and eventually I found my passport. It needs to be valid, by the way. It has to be uh, within you know before expiration date on it. And uh, if you have the passport, just bring it in with your first lesson. And uh, they have to put that in your pilot log book, which is where all the sign-offs and everything for your solo go. Um, you will need that before your first lesson. So, I mean, they, they can give you a lesson on, on ground school and just, you know, four basic things on flight and just the beginning things, but they will not let you fly without uh, confirming that you're a citizen or uh, I don't know what it is for... Uh, People who are not citizens that take flight lessons, but uh, since September 11th happened, they uh, they really check on that. So bring your passport or your actual birth certificate on paper with a seal. Um, always a good thing to have. Uh, I recommend the passport though. So IACRA stands for the Integrated Airman Certification and Rating Application. Uh, pretty much what you're going to do is you're going to go to IACRA. Dot FAA dot gov and it'll bring you to this website and you will want to register for an account and then you will log in uh, I got I'm gonna log into my account which already has a student pilot license on it but just to show you what it looks like when you log in whenever you log in this can be a terms of service just know that you're dealing with the FAA here so uh, you don't want to lie on this website so this is what mine looks like um, Again, I'm going to blur some things out here because there's some private uh, numbers here. But uh, the biggest thing is once you go through your flight instructor and they enter all the stuff in, they're going to say that uh, that you're registered and your doc's complete, and then they'll mail you that card that I showed you earlier. And you'll see down here that shows you the certificate type, and you're going to be student pilot at first. What you're going to do is you're going to go to this left menu, though, if you don't have that, and you're going to start a new application. And all you're going to do is you're just going to enter in all the information it asks for. And then the biggest thing is you want to remember your FTN, the FTN, sorry. The biggest thing is you want to remember your FTN number, which again, I'm going to uh, blur it out. But uh, you need to bring that to your flight instructor so that he can find your application for your license. And then once you do that, he's going to fill out stuff in. They're going to verify everything with that flight instructor. And uh, you will be on your way to getting your student pilot license. So after you apply on the IACRA, you get your flight instructor. Again, you want to arrive to your first lesson a little early. Maybe they'll be there early so they can do that. They might do it as part of the lesson. You might be paying for it. Uh, I know my flight instructor, he actually did it as not part of the first lesson, which was awesome. Um, and he got all that stuff in there and it was just done and again I was prepared I had my FTN number I had the application already ready to go um, basically learned that all that in ground school I took the free ground schooling before I did lessons which is another thing I recommend uh, which gives you all the, the knowledge and information you're gonna need to pass the test later on which I haven't done yet but uh, I'm getting up there so anyways that card will be delivered in the mail uh, regardless of your medical, but you will not be able to solo until you have a medical. Uh, what you will do is you will go to an FAA certified doctor for the medical, or with the recent reform of the third class medical, um, you'll have to check this online, because again, I did the old, the one right before they revised the third class medical. Uh, you can go to your own physician, I believe, and uh, they, they can do it themselves. Um, let me tell you the route with the FAA medical flight doctor. First off, if you have any questions, um, it's, it's a good idea to ask them during your medical. Uh, for example, my family has a history of diabetes. And as you know or don't know, diabetes can be a uh, limiting factor in a medical license. Uh, currently, I do not have diabetes, but I did ask the, the flight medical doctor, who, by the way, was recommended by the flight school and uh, recommended by many, even the students. Ask around. Ask, ask your flight instructors. Ask other students at the school. I asked people at ground school that were already kind of doing the flight lessons while I was doing the free ground school, um, which was a great experience. We'll talk about that in another video. 
but um, I went to a FAA doctor that was recommended. The uh, medical cost $100 for me, which was cheaper than other doctors. There's, there's no limit to what they can charge you for an FAA medical, by the way. It's all up to the doctor. Uh, $100 was really good. Other FAA medical doctors, if you don't shop around, they're going to charge you 200 250 I mean, insane amounts for something that is just a, a, a basically a checkup, a physical, and checking over all your documentation. But what you want to do with the medical is you want to schedule it first, and then on, I believe it's IACRA or the FAA website somewhere, I can't remember, but there, there's a form that you fill out with all your medical information, all, all pre-printed out and everything. And if you fill it out ahead of time, you're going to save yourself a lot of time on when, when you're there. Because all he'll do is you just give him the FTN number or the, the medical number and he'll, he'll pull up in his computer. He'll have like your list of medications that you take if you take any. Um, I don't take any, so it was pretty easy there. Um, any history of surgery. I had a broken arm from high school hockey back in 1995. No limitations. That was no problem. You just have to have a document that you had a surgery. And then uh, it's no big thing. Uh, they will check it just to make sure it's good. You know, just to trust your word. But again, that, that's an official FAA document that you filled out with your medical history. So you don't want to lie on it because it's a privilege. It's not a right to get a medical. Um, I went for the third class medical because that's all I need for private pilot. It's all. It's also, um, there's an excellent website, which I'll leave in the description. It tells you about medicals and um, diabetes, illnesses like that, and, and what you can and cannot do. Um, again, that was a major sticking point for me because again, family history with diabetes. But um, there are ways of still having a medical with issues. Uh, there, there was a story from my doctor again I asked about you know what would happen and blah 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 and he's like well you need a special clearance from me you have to prove that you have it under control just a, a concern in the future for me because uh, you know part of it is genetics but other than that I mean it went pretty well uh, you have a, a urine test um, you have that there's no blood work um, they ask you all these questions. They check your basic functions and your vision. I will let you know that I did not pass the vision test without glasses. So they put a limitation on my, my medical license that says I have to fly with uh, corrective lenses, which is fine with me, obviously. Um, the requirements, you know, are, are online, which I will uh, show you right after this, after our spiel. But once you get the medical, you get it right there. Basically, if you pass and there's no questions and there's no no contact with the FAA to clear you on anything, um, again, having a good FAA medical doctor that would look out for you and vouch for you the best they can would also help. Obviously, they can't break the law. They can't stretch things. But if they can vouch for you and your health and you do take care of yourself, I can tell you I, I've been uh, taking better care of myself since the medical. Not that I had anything pro any problems come up, but uh, just generally wanting to try to stay a little more fit. Um, you know, it, it could be a great motivating factor. So, anyways, we'll look at the uh, general requirements. Again, I'll leave a link in the description to the website that has this awesome thing on uh, medical certificates and what you need and what needs to happen and the requirements. So, let's look at the requirements together, shall we? So, just to let you know, if you Google FAA medical requirements, it's going to come up with this link right here synopsis of medical standards and it gives you a really easy to follow menu we'll click on that and it says guide for aviation medical examiners but just to scroll down it tells you what it looks for so first class second class and third class and again you just need a private pilot's license a third class medical for the private pilot's license so for example distance vision you need 2040 or better in each eye with or without correction so you can wear glasses just like me i have glasses whenever i fly uh, to correct my vision which wasn't terrible, but needed to be corrected. Uh, near vision, 20 foot or better in each eye, with or without correction, as measured at 16 inches. Luckily, luckily for me, I'm nearsighted, so I wouldn't have a problem with that. But uh, the distance vision, obviously I needed a limitation on that. Intermediate vision, there's no requirement for the third class license, but second class and first class, if you want a second class license, that means commercial pilot, basically. That means that you're not going to fly for the airlines, but that you can do ferrying of planes, uh, flying for profit, flying uh, anyone, uh, banners, if you will, uh, stuff like that. 
Uh, first class is obviously an ATP, uh, which is basically for the airlines and stuff. It's the most, uh, it's the most uh, difficult one to get for medicals. And again, the private pilot's license, uh, the third class medical, that has been revamped, but the requirements are still the same, just with your doctor able to do it. Okay, color vision, uh, color blindness. You need to be able to perceive those colors necessary for safe performance of airman duties. Uh, they do give you cards to look at with different colors to make sure that you can see those colors. Uh, obviously, that's important for like lights and uh, stuff like that. Hearing, just an average conversational voice in a quiet room. Um, they're checking that the whole medical because they're talking to you and, and asking you questions. It's, it's nothing big, by the way. You don't have to be nervous. And the audiology is uh, speech discrimination, at least 70% in one ear. So if you have hearing problems, you can be, you can be um, hearing impaired and still be a pilot, believe it or not. You just have to meet their requirements. And, uh, you know, they said that in the ground school, the free ground school I did go to. Um, Again, they, this is for the doctors to, to follow, but the sound levels for the ears and what you need. Uh, ear, nose, and throat, they're gonna check that. Your pulse, they're gonna check that for your cardiac, your hearts. Um, they're gonna do that um, electrocardiogram. Now, I am currently in my 30s, so I did not need a cardiogram for the third class medical, which is right here, but if you have a first class medical because you want to ATP it, at age 35 and annually after age 40, you have to get the electrocardiogram so they can check how your heart's working. Uh, any mental diagnoses would have to be brought up. Again, you don't want to lie on that form. You want to make sure that you put it down and that you can explain it. Cause after that, they do let you explain it on there. Um, substance abuse, dependence, I mean, that, that should be pretty uh, understanding that they're not going to let you fly under uh, things, but there's a whole thing on here. Uh, history of substitutes within preceding two years is disqualifying. And then other disqualifying conditions, again, we talked about the diabetes, uh, but it says requiring hypoglycemic medication. So I know it's tough. And, and again, I, I've recently really been taking care of my own self, uh, knowing the history of my family. But if you need medication for the diabetes, for your blood sugar, you're gonna have to report that. And what I was told by my my FAA doctor, basically the medical doctor, he's like, well, if you can guarantee that it falls within certain limits with the medicine option, that he can basically apply for the FAA to give you a special issuance. And then uh, you'll be monitored by your own doctor. I believe it's every three months. Um, angina, pectoris, coronary heart disease, my, my, myocardial infraction, and cardiac valve replacement, cardiac, so it's all heart conditions, bipolar disorders, psychosis, personality disorder, substance dependence, substance abuse, epilepsy, uh, transient muscle control of the nervous system. I mean, obviously these are things that, you know, you wouldn't want to see in a pilot. But again, there, there are ways if it's not too bad that the there are things that the FAA will allow still. Uh, one thing I will say is that in Canada, I know in Canada, they allow pilots with diabetes to fly as long as they prove that it's under control, even with insulin. You see right here that says hypoglycemic medication. If you're flying and you're taking insulin, you're not gonna get a first class license most likely. They, they do not want you to control it with insulin. Um, I think it's kind of dumb because again, Canada allows you to, and they fly in the same skies. But and uh, the American Diabetes Association is is trying to uh, work with the FAA on this. But pretty much, if I was found to be diabetic, I would not want to do the insulin myself if I want to keep my medical license, even if it's third class. Because once you start taking the insulin, it's very hard to get a medical license. Uh, sports pilot license? That's probably what you'd be looking at at that point. Um, if you take just regular pills, you have to make sure that they're on the cleared list for the FAA for the uh, treatment of diabetes and blood sugar, and you'd have to prove that you're keeping your levels stable. Um, so a big, I mean, it's, it's a little difficult with the diabetes, but it's doable. And that, that's what my flight doctor told me when I asked him um, 
during the thing. Uh, they're gonna find out if you're diabetic, by the way, during the medical for that with that urine sample because they're gonna look for sugar in your urine. So seeing that I passed the medical, I'm taking it like I'm pretty good still. And uh, like I said, I'm just trying my best to uh, watch what I do, keep my carbon intake low. And uh, if I ever do get diabetes, I'm hoping that I can control it with diet. So it's not the end all of everything when you have diabetes. So again, it, picking the right medical doctor, not to skirt the rules, not to change the rules, but to actually have experience with writing the FAA and saying that you have everything under control, because you do have to have it under control. And then they uh, give you an endorsement for that and the FAA gets final decision, but it can happen. So if you want to fly and you feel like you can you can control yourself and, and you can monitor your health and uh, work with your doctor and get it to where it needs to be it's uh definitely still doable and finally once you pass that medical test and they're going to check for hearing and all that stuff uh at that thing if you pass right there they're going to give you your your medical uh, again i'm going to um just basically blot out some things here with my personal information but it's just a piece of paper they give you that you get right there at the office and you sign it uh, if you're not cleared talk to the medical doctor you know say why wasn't I cleared and how can we get this cleared if at all possible and if you have a good um, flight medical doctor um, they will probably try to see if they can get you within the FAA uh, rules uh, medical license after you get this medical license you will be able to solo um, again I haven't hit my solo hours yet I'm 11 or flight hours in and I'm um, flying hopefully next week but uh, the minimum is 20 but you don't get to go on your solo until your instructor signs you off and thinks that you're prepared for it uh, right now my instructor and I are also going over a pre-solo test uh, I had to answer all these questions you have to study to make sure that you know uh, basic flight rules for your solo and then uh, hopefully I'll get signed up for it and we'll, I'll keep you updated on that. But this is what the medical looks like now and you have to keep the, keep the medical on you and also the student pilot license, which is that card I showed you. You wanna keep that on you when you're flying. And uh, yeah, that's how you uh, get your student pilot license and also your medical. And uh, if you have any questions that I can potentially answer or at least research for you, uh, please leave them in the comment section. All right, I hope this helps.